Do you still use Firebase push notifications? Then you are a bit outdated because now we have a better option, OneSignal. In today's video, we're going to explore push notifications with OneSignal. Imagine you have a fantastic app with a growing user base and you want to keep them engaged and informed about the latest updates, promotions or events. Well, that's where OneSignal comes in. OneSignal is a powerful platform that allows you to send messages to all of your app users simultaneously, regardless of whether they're on Android, iOS or the web. Now let's talk about how we can implement it within our application. For that, first of all, we will open up our Flutter project, where we want to implement our push notifications. In this video, I will be using this e-commerce app. We will also provide the source code of this starter project, which you guys can download and then follow along with the tutorial. Now we have our project open. Let's move to the first step, adding OneSignal dependency. For that, let's open up our Flutter project. To integrate OneSignal, we need to add the OneSignal dependency to our pubspec.yml file. We will also add Firebase core dependency because later on, we will be adding Firebase to our app. Next, we need to configure our Android and iOS projects to work with OneSignal, which brings us to the next step. Setting up Android and iOS platforms, you can easily know how we can configure our project for Android and iOS by visiting the Setup Guides documentation of OneSignal. And here inside, if we select Flutter SDK, we have the instructions for adding the OneSignal Flutter SDK to our Flutter app for iOS and Android. In this tutorial, we will be focusing on Android Therefore, we will open up our project, and here we will go to the Android folder, then the app folder, and lastly we will go inside the source folder. Here you can see that we have the build.gradle file where we have to make some changes, therefore we will open it, and here, if we scroll down a little, here we have to set the compile SDK version to 33, and with this, we are done with the configuration for the Android platform. Now, let's move forward to the next step, setting up one signal account. For that, simply go to onesignal.com and click here to sign up. Enter your email and password, or you can also log in with your socials. Once you're logged in, you will see the pricing table. For now, we will go with the free version. After that, enter some more information such as your name, your role, and the reason you are using OneSignal. After that, you can enter information about your organization such as name, website, type of organization, and range of employees at your organization. After finishing all this data, finally, you'll finally be able to create a new app and obtain the required credentials for integrating OneSignal into your Flutter project. Now we are registered with OneSignal, let's click here to set up at least one platform for our app. Here you can see that we have different platforms that we can choose from. In this tutorial, we are focusing on Android Therefore, we will select Google Android FCM. Now we need to do some configuration here. Basically, we need to upload a JSON file here, which contains a private key to access Firebase Cloud Messaging, which we can get from Firebase. And it also brings us to the next step, Firebase Initialization. Before we can integrate OneSignal into our Flutter application, we need to set up Firebase for push notifications. For that, we will head over to the Firebase console, and here we will create a new project. Then we will give a name to our project. Here we will disable Google Analytics because we don't need it. And then we will create our project. It will take some time and our Firebase project is ready. Click on continue to go to the dashboard. Now we need to select our platform. So we will select Flutter here. Then we will follow up all the steps to add Firebase to our Flutter app. Once we are done with two steps, the last step is to initialize the Firebase within the app. Therefore, we will return to our VS code. And here, within the main function, we will initialize our Firebase. Then we will click on Continue to Console. Now here we need to enable the Firebase Cloud Messaging. For that, we will click here on the Project Settings. Then we will go to the Cloud Messaging tab. Here, first of all, make sure that Cloud Messaging API is enabled and if not, we can simply click here and go to Google Cloud Console and here we can enable Cloud Messaging. Now coming back to the Firebase Console, now we have our Cloud Messaging API enabled, we will go to our Service Accounts tab. Here we will generate our JSON file, here you can see that Node.js is selected, then we will click on Generate New Private Key and again on Generate Key. With this, it will generate a JSON file for us that we can save on our computer, which looks something like this. Now that we have our JSON file, we will go back to our OneSignal console, and here we will upload the JSON file that we just created. 
Then we will click on save and continue. Now we have to select the SDK. We are building a Flutter app. Therefore we will select Flutter here. Now we have our app ID that later on we will use. So make sure to copy it and then click on done. Here you can see that now we have Google Android with active platforms. Now we can go to the dashboard where we can see all the details about our app. Before we create a new push notification, we need to initialize one signal within our application. Therefore, returning back to our VS Code. Here within the main methods, after Firebase initialization, we will add this line of code and after it we will initialize our one signal class and then here we need to pass our app ID, which we have copied earlier. Therefore, we will paste it here. After that, we need to ask permission from the phone to enable the notifications. Therefore, we will add this line of code and with this, we are all set so we can move to our final step of creating push notifications. For that, let's go to our one signal dashboard. Here on the top right corner, we have the new message button. And if we press on it, we have different types of messages that we can use. We are focusing on push notifications. Therefore, we will select the new push. This will open a new page where we will enter all the details of our push notification. First of all, we have to give our message a name. In this case, I will name it update. Then we can target the audience. We want to send the push notification to everyone. Therefore, we will leave it as default. Then the actual thing comes in. Here we can write our message and details of the message. And on the right hand side, we can see how our push notification will look like, which makes it more interesting. Now let's write a title of the notification, then the actual message. We can also upload images, therefore we will upload an image. We can also give it a URL. In this case, we will leave it blank. Next, we can also configure platform-specific settings here. We will leave it as it is. We can also play around with advanced settings. On the right-hand side, you can see that this is how our notification will look on our phone. Next, we can play around with the delivery schedule. We can send the push notification immediately or we can schedule it at a specific time. In this case, we will set it to immediately because we want to see the results. After this, we can also make it time zone specific, but right now, let's leave it like that. With this, we are done with our push notification. Now it is time to send it. Therefore, we will click on review and send. Before sending, you can review everything once again. And finally, send a message. Here, you can hear the notification sound. We have received a notification. And if we scroll the notification bar, you can see that the push notification is here. And if we click on the notification, it takes us to our application. We can also receive notifications in the background even when our app is closed. Like here, you can see that I have closed my app. Now returning back to the one signal dashboard, here we will duplicate the old push notification and we will leave everything as it is. After that, we will click here to review and send the notification. Well, here you can hear the notification sound. We have received the notification. Even our app is not running. And when we click on the notification, we are directed to the home screen. We can also pass some additional data while sending our push notification. For example, if we want our users to navigate to a specific screen when they click on the notifications. For that, first of all, we will go to the main screen and here within the material app, we have the roots property where we can define different routes for our screens. Therefore, we will define routers in a key value format. For the initial route, we will keep it as a forward slash, which means the intro screen. Now that we have our routes ready, we want to extract the data from the push notification when we receive it. For that here, first of all, we will create a static final navigator key as a global key of type navigator state, and then we will assign it here to the navigator property of the material app. After that declares a variable named screen, which will later hold the value of the screen name retrieved from the notification's additional data. Then we will add a click listener to one signal notifications. When a notification is clicked, the provided callback function, which takes the event as a parameter, will be executed. Inside the click listener callback function, it extracts the additional data from the notification event. This additional data is stored in the data variable. Then we will try to retrieve the value associated with the key screen from the data object. If data is not null, it assigns data screen to screen. After that, we will check if the screen variable is not null. If it has some data, we will use the navigator key to navigate to the specified screen. The push named screen method pushes a new route onto the navigation stack, effectively navigating to the screen identified by the screen variable. Now, let's test it out. For that, we will go 
to the one signal dashboard and here we will duplicate the previous notification but this time we will also pass additional data to the notification for that we will click on the advanced settings and then in the additional data fields we will add the screen as a key and for the value we will write the root path of our screen which we have defined it earlier within the roots of material app with this we are done here now we will click here on review and send and once again you can review everything before sending the notification once everything is confirmed click here on send and here you can see that we have received our notification when we click on it redirects us to the category screen this is really helpful when we want our users to go to a specific screen when click on the notification well, we've successfully integrated OneSignal push notifications into our Flutter application. I hope you found this tutorial helpful in enhancing user engagement within your app. And if you're interested in developing apps, websites, or backend servers using Flutter, Hey Flutter is the perfect solution. With over seven years of expertise and a track record of crafting numerous applications and websites, we've got the experience you need. Simply go to heyflutter.com app and let's begin building together.